I kind of included this uh, chart on here just for your review, just to go through the aortic arches. Again, if I had to remember three of them on here, I would remember that the first arch is associated with the maxillary artery. The left fourth arch is associated with the aortic arch. And then the left sixth arch is associated with the ductus arteriosus, uh, particularly the ductus arteriosus being the, the high yield one. And the reason for that is there's very specific pathologies that can come from these three. The two relevant ones to this video is the defects in the aortic arch. Okay, being over here. So the aortic arch, if I had some defect in the formation here, I might end up with coarctation. Coarctation is essentially going to be some narrowing of the aortic arch. And this tends to present with um, continuous murmurs over the back. And you'll see collateral blood uh, flow formation. You'll see rib notching. I'll go through all of this, though, um, a little bit later in the video series. But just some things to remember. So aortic arch classically associated with the left fourth aortic arch that can lead to coarctation. So if you have a board question where they give you a patient that has coarctation or they have Turner syndrome or something you know, very classically associated with this and they ask you what's the embryologic derivative associated with it, you might want to remember that this is associated with the left fourth arch. And again, the same concept is true for the left sixth arch. It's classically going to be associated with the ductus arteriosus. And this gets asked about in the setting of the patent ductus arteriosus which we just said that we can keep the ductus arteriosus open when we give a patient a prostaglandins. So if I have a patient that has the transposition of the great arteries, right, where I have two parallel circuits, we can give these patients prostaglandins to keep the ductus arteriosus open. So that's what I can do. I can give them prostaglandins. However, if I have, let's say I have a premature newborn, okay? So a premature newborn, um, in these situations, they're probably going to have the ductus arteriosus continue to be open for some extended period of time, right? Because, you know, the newborn is premature. And so in these situations, I can give an inhibitor of prostaglandins. Okay, so I can give an inhibitor of prostaglandins to close the ductus arteriosus. Okay, so something, for example, the one that comes up a lot is going to be endomethacin. Okay, but there's multiple different modalities for this. Classically, it's going to be, you know, some form of NSAID because that's going to help inhibit cyclooxygenase and inhibit prostaglandin formation. And just remember, what is going to be the, you know, very classic murmur that you're going to hear with a PDA or patent ductus arteriosus? It's going to be the continuous machine-like murmur classically in the left infraclavicular region. And in some cases, they'll also have a palpable thrill. Uh, that's mentioned in the questions. Okay, so this slide is super busy and we're going to actually come back to the slide in a future video, but I highlighted in red here just some things I want you to be familiar with. And, you know, before I talk too much about that, let me just introduce this branchial apparatus. So a couple things I think you should really know here. So the first one is you should know that this branchial apparatus is really broken up into three major categories. So we have pharyngeal arches, which are, tend to be, as you can see, the most complicated. So these are the pharyngeal arches here. You can see four of them. The fifth one essentially obliterates in utero. So you don't really have to remember much about that. But the sixth one is not depicted in the image. But these structures kind of in the middle are the pharyngeal arches. Okay, so you can see them here. So the blue, uh, yellow, and red is basically representing vascular and neurologic structures inside of the uh, pharyngeal arch. Okay, so we have our pharyngeal arches, which like I said are these structures. And then we also have our pharyngeal pouches, which are going to be kind of in the inside. If you think about like a kangaroo, right? It has a pouch kind of on the inside. And you'll see where I'm going with this in a second. And then you also have the pharyngeal grooves. So you have the pharyngeal grooves, which the grooves are going to be on the outside. So the point here is, is that the arches are going to mainly come from mesoderm. So they're in the middle, so they're primarily going to be coming from mesoderm. And I'm also going to put in here some neural crest cells. And in the neurology section, we talked about how these cranial nerves, most of them are derived from neural crest cells, okay? And so that's why, that's where that kind of comes in. So mesoderm and neural crest cell tissue. The pharyngeal pouches, on the other hand, these are going to be primarily derived from endoderm. Okay, so again, that, like I said, if you're thinking about the kangaroo that has the pouch on the inside, right, so the pouches are primarily derived from the inside, the endoderm. And then the pharyngeal grooves, lastly here, are going to be derived from ectoderm. So my point here is don't fall into the trap of, you know, if they give you a question and they say, okay, cranial nerve 7 
it's from which of the following structures the branchial apparatus you might be saying oh i know it's the second one but which second one is it the second arch is it the second pouch is it the second groove remember it's from the second arch not the second groove right even though this is ectoderm you think of neurologic tissue this is more of the central nervous system the neural crest cells more of the peripheral nervous system which is associated with more of the cranial nerves but what i want you to know from this video remember the maxillary artery is particularly high yield associated with the first mandibular arch We'll talk more about a lot of this, like I said, in a future video. And this table doesn't include everything. I mean, there's even more you can put on here. I think what's on here, though, is most of the high yield stuff that you have to know. Okay, and like I said, we'll go through some of this in a little bit. Um, but again, maxillary artery, that's a big one associated with the first arch, the mandibular arch. And remember that the left aortic arch is associated with the left fourth segment of the pharyngeal arches and the left ductus arteriosus is associated with the sixth. Now, of course, you can go through here and, and you can remember some of these other structures and, you know, there's going to be recall questions that we have for you to kind of just reinforce some of this information. But again, the two classic pathologies to remember if I have, you know, defects in the formation of the aortic arch, you can end up with stenosis of the aorta and you can end up with a patent ductus arteriosus. And again, they can ask you what's the embryologic, you know, derivative or a pharyngeal arch that's associated with that pathology. And that's where you make these connections with the sixth arch, for example.